Hey guys, so I know it's been a while since you've seen my face, but I figured I would finally show it. <laughs> so, um, I'm kind of doing two videos in one tonight. Um, the first part of this video, so this might be a little bit long, is just quickly showing a couple of things that I have acquired lately and um, if anyone wants me to do like more extensive videos on these things. And then I'm going to be getting into, um, <clears throat> see. oh, okay, that's right. Um, I'm going to be getting into Little Cosmic Crows, get to know your witches tag. I'm a couple months late on it, but that's, that's just me. <laughs> um, so the first thing I wanted to share really quick was I recently picked up these, um, hi <laughs> Um, in a, they were out of stock for a while, but I just got them, um, these Making Magic cards. And they're really cool because it's just this teeny tiny little deck, but they're little sigils. Look at my camera, look at it, it's like, kind of focusing. Maybe not, it just focused on me. <laughs> um, but I thought that they were really great for spell work, or just really kind of anything. Um, or even to encourage me to do a spell on something that I maybe am overseeing or not seeing or, you know, so I thought that that was a really great little addition and it was only $10. I can do a full video on this if anybody wants to see them more, but I thought I would just kind of throw them in here and the box is super cute. <laughs> um, so there's that. The other thing is, is that I just, I'm not going to be going through this at all because I'm working with this deck for this whole month and I really want to do an extensive video on this, but I recently got, um, the illuminated earth Oracle by Claire Mack. And, um, there's a lot of reasons why I purchased this deck, but um, and I will go into all of this in a video probably at the end of this month when I work after I'm done kind of working extensively with it but I really kind of wanted to give like a good full review on it so um, look for that at the end of the month I'll try and get it up when I can the last thing I shared this a little bit in my uh, recent video where I talked about the tarot bullet journal that I've been working on well I talked about how it's got a kitty fur on it. <laughs> I was using a planner for about s seven months now because I started it in December that was gifted to me and I loved it very much but um, I have since moved on to this because this was recommended by a good friend of mine and I know that I mentioned in my last video why I liked it but it's like a bullet journal for planning but it's got um, templates laid out so you don't have to lay out daily spreads um, or monthly so if you're like me and you're new to this hobby and you kind of want to get your toes wet with it this is a really really good option for um, starting and planning but still having that creative aspect because I really needed something to harness my creativity and get me drawing and get me doing that kind of stuff but also be something that I knew I was going to use a lot so, whoop, <laughs> there's June, um, and it's kind of fun because you can do it different every month, and then I've got like, you know, last week and this week, and you can kind of embellish it with like little doodles or um, drawings or things like that, but then in the back, there's all this spare dot, just regular dot grid. So I decided to start doing other things that I wanted to track on more long terms. So this is my books to read. I have um, a symptom tracker and this is going to be made monthly um, because I have a lot of chronic issues, um, endometriosis, anxiety, depression, IBS, um, asthma, allergies, that kind of stuff. Um, I have joint pain, various things, and so I'm in and out of the doctor rather frequently, 
which is one of the other reasons why I haven't been making videos because I've been kind of going through some stuff. But um, so I wanted to have a place where I could track all of my symptoms for on a month to month basis. Um, that way, when I go in for appointments and stuff, I can be like, you know, I've had more days recently where the pain's been worse or this has been bothering me a little bit more and things like that. Um, then I made the moon phases. So I have the whoop, full moons over here. And then um, I made a calendar for the main moon phases for each month there. I might actually go back in and write the astrological signs next to each of these on the other side because I just have the dates. But I like to know like what sign the moon is in. And I have an app on my phone called Deluxe Moon that's really great. Um, I actually have a widget like on my phone's main home screen that I refer to. But still, I'd kind of like to have it here, too, because I really I really refer to that kind of stuff. Um, then I did goals for 2019, which I'm still filling out again. And this is from my old planner. So I've been reusing the paper and the artwork in there. Um, this next stuff, I'm not going to show you what is filled out. I'm going to just go to the blank pages because it's a little personal. But I have, um, I'm in talk therapy, so I did post therapy notes for each session. So I can kind of... Because, I mean, honestly, I think the point of therapy is to remember what I discussed, you know, and to remember what I've been working through and to write down things that I want to discuss for next time. And I was noticing that I was having a big issue retaining all of the information. So I felt like this was a good place to put it. Um, YouTube, <laughs> just so kind of blank. Um, and then um, I made a cleaning schedule because I am a stay-at-home mom, so part of my responsibility is to help keep my house clean. So there's just some things that I want to make sure that I get done, um, you know, in a certain chronological order by a certain time. Otherwise, it just, it slips my mind, especially since I've had two kids. Like, it's just, it's so hard to have all of it up here. It really is, and it's very overwhelming, especially for a person who's highly sensitive like myself. Um, and then I thought this was great. It's, um called the when did I last and it's basically just all these mundane things that you just so easily forget about but you should be doing rather frequently like when did I change my toothbrush out when did I clean my car when did I back up photos on my pc uh, files on my pc and stuff because we have a um, server that we back everything up to and then that server has other you know <laughs> um when did I clean the pantry when did I dust the fans when did I clean the windows you know that kind of stuff all that little stuff that like as time goes by you just forget about it and you're like I don't know when was the last time I did that so you know I can fill out dates here to remind myself when did I do that as I was doing this though I thought I should write down when did I last um cleanse the house and then I thought why don't I just do when did I last spiritual edition? <laughs> so I thought you guys would get a kick out of this. It says, you can see, you can see my little doodles and designs there. <laughs> um, it's a charged my crystals, cleansed the house, cleansed my decks, ground and center, dust altars, rearranged altars, sat with spirit, organized apothecary, protected doorways, Changed out working crystals, blessed four corners of property, charged talismans, had a spiritual bath, did shadow work, or made moon, made moon water. Because I try to like re, uh, go through my moon water and make it um, as frequently as I can so it doesn't sit for too long. I think the other thing I'm going to do in here is, you know, chuck like oils and stuff. Because oils can sit for a while and then it's just like, should I be using this? <laughs> so, um... And then I've got, you know, all this back here that I can play around with too. So I wanted to share that because it's been really fun to have this creative expression, but still have something that I can put all the, the all the, <laughs> all the stuff in my brain <laughs> that I don't need in my brain. <laughs> so there's that. Um, on to the next part of this video. Little Cosmic Crows Get to Know Your Witches Take. So I'm going to be referring over here because on my other screen I have the questions. They are 15 and I'm going to try and go through them fast so this video isn't super long. But you guys haven't seen my face in a while so I suppose if it's a little long it's probably okay. <laughs> but if you make it at the end of this video you're awesome and thank you. <laughs> 
Um, the first question is, does your sun sign portray you correctly? If not, do your other planetary signs? Okay, so this is something I've actually struggled with tremendously because I'm an Aquarius and there are things about me that are very, like, typical Aquarian. <laughs> and then there are other things about me that aren't. Um, for instance, the aloofness. I can get aloof when I'm angry. That is actually something that happens. But overall, I don't really think I'm aloof. I tend to be goofy and kind of shy and awkward. But I also try to be very, like, kind and welcoming and... Um, I, the thing with Aquarians is they tend to have like a lot of detachment or so it seems with, from emotions and I'm a very like, I'm a very emotional person. Um, I'm very airy in the sense of an Aquarius. I'm very, I'm very, I'm very eclectic. I'm very eccentric in that sense. Um, and I, I'm very independent, but I'm also very sentimental. I'm very, um, my heart is out on my sleeve, I have a lot of feels going on, and it, it took me a long time to try and identify with my sun sign until I looked up the rest of my birth chart, and if astrology is not your thing, and you feel like you don't identify with your sun sign, you're only looking at one tiny fraction of the picture. So look up your birth chart, and you'll find out a lot more about yourself. In my case, it was when I found out that my moon sign was cancer. <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then I actually found out that Aquarius is not very strong in the house of the sun and cancer is the ruler of the moon. So if you have a Cancerian moon sign, you're tend to probably going to identify a little bit more with those traits, especially if you have a sun sign that's weak in the sun house. So there's that. The second question, what song brings you the most magical vibes? Anything by Florence and the Machine. <laughs> I don't know. She's just so witchy to me. She's like a modern day Stevie Nicks. I just, I don't know, something about her. She makes me feel like powerful. Um, there's another song that gives me witch vibes and it's kind of a, a little different than you would expect. Um, I'm a big fan of the band called The Glitch Mob. I really like um, electronic music and they are an electronic band, but they have a song called Becoming Harmonious. and I just, I don't know, there's something about that song that is probably one of my favorite songs of all time. I just love it. It's it's very, um, I don't want to say ethereal, but when I listen to it, I get this like image of lightning. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's more. I could definitely get into more, but just to quickly answer that question. Which one of your deities, guides, or ancestors is the most sarcastic with you? Or if this doesn't apply, which one of your tarot or oracle decks is? Oh, I kind of want to answer both of those questions. Um, let's see, when it comes to tarot decks, uh, the Wild Unknown is definitely one of those decks that just kind of like hands it to you. The other one that I have that really does but in a slightly different way is um, the Dark Goddess Tarot. So there's that. Um, and then Deities, Guides, or Ancestors. It's kind of difficult because um, I work with Odin somewhat. Um, he is more of just kind of that ever-present um, old old man say wise sage guide sort of um he mostly just kind of chills in the background of my life <laughs> um but freya is my main my main one uh, my main deity and she more she has her moments but she's not necessarily sarcastic she's actually pretty loving um i find but she's definitely got like a a strength or a harshness about her like she will kick you in the damn teeth if she needs to <laughs> um and then i i work somewhat with a santa morte which is a new thing and she mostly is more for kind of uh communing you know developing mediumship uh abilities and um 
you know, communing with the dead and communing with ancestors and watching over the dead and kind of understanding my own mortality. And the interactions that I've had with her aren't necessarily sarcastic, really. They're more... It's hard to describe her, um, especially because I'm in that, like, getting to know you stage. So I don't exactly know how to answer that question. Um, biggest witchy... Number four is the biggest witchy mess up or miss... Uh, interpretation. It's been a while since something's really gone wrong. Um, I don't actually think in the years that I've been practicing that I have had a spell go catastrophically wrong. I've had things happen differently than I thought that they would. Um, like when I did the spell to conceive my first son, I, um, I asked for a daughter and I ended up with a son and then I did basically the same spell but I invoked Freya instead of the Morgan for conceiving my second son and I again asked for a daughter and I had another little boy <laughs> and I kind of was like okay nope this is what was meant to happen it was basically the universe being like nope this this is what you wanted really what you truly wanted so we're gonna give you what you really truly wanted and you know after after a bit I was just like okay yep <laughs> so I don't know I'm I don't think I've really had like a huge huge mess up I've just kind of had little things here and there basically and I may me being like okay that happened completely different than what I was thinking but it's meant to be that way so would you write a book on your craft or spirituality? Why? If you ever, if you already have, what are your challenges in doing so? This is question number five. Um, I'm not a writer. Um, I am an artist. <laughs> through and through, very much an artist. I write, but I write, I don't write, um fiction or stories or I used to when I was younger um, quite a bit but as I've gotten older that's just not what I've wanted to do and so I'm not I'm not really a writer I I pour myself into stuff visually so I'm um, artistic in that sense so I don't think I could ever write a book honestly um, but if I ever did it probably would be about my spirituality and it probably would be about divination because <laughs> That tends to be my favorite. Question number six. If someone wanted to summon you, what five, five items would they need? I used to ask my friends and family this question just to see what kind of answers I would get. Um, coffee. <laughs> Books. Something with the moon on it. <laughs> something with water. <laughs> Let's see. Coffee. Books. Something with moon. Something with water. I need one more thing. Video games. <laughs> That would be it. <laughs> um, or maybe something with Sailor Moon. <laughs> um, something nerdy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Number six. Oh, no. Number seven. Um, every time I make a questions video, I'm always like, what number am I on? If you were a ghost, what place would you haunt? Honestly, I'd just go wherever I wanted to go. It'd be like teleportation. <laughs> I just travel all over Japan and <laughs> be dead. <laughs> Gosh, that would be what would happen. All right, we're just leaving it at that. <laughs> what is the funniest way someone has reacted to finding out you're a witch? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do we want, like, the judgment or do we want, like, funny stories? I mean, it took me a good six months to discuss my, my spiritual beliefs with my husband. And once I finally opened up about it a little bit, he was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> he was like, I kind of knew. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of negative reactions, plenty of negative, but a lot of positive too. Um, but most of the time when someone's really close to me, and they, I tell them, they're like, uh-huh, and what's new? So, I guess maybe there's something about it that's a tidge obvious. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. <laughs> um, number nine, do you have any superstitions? 
mostly to do with like dishonoring the dead um i i have things about that like it's just a thing i don't like um that kind of stuff like um the dead being disrespected and things like that so those are like my biggest superstitions I'm not horribly superstitious, um, also because I'm pretty intuitive, so, like, if, if I see something that would be considered a bad omen, if I get a good feeling from it instead, then I'm generally like, okay, <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I used to be pretty superstitious when I was little, actually, and I'm not entirely sure why, but maybe it was just, like, born to be a witch. Um, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Number 10, if you could possess any fantasy magic, what would your power be? Oh, I love this question. I love this question because this is always something I love to discuss. It's okay. For me, it would be telekinesis, like easily. Not telepathy. Don't want to know your thoughts. <laughs> you can keep them to yourself. But telekinesis, can I move things with my mind, please? Yes, I would love that. <laughs> like, get angry at someone and, and slam the door with my mind. Oh be so great <laughs> um number 11 what is something random on your altar right now okay i will show you the most random thing on my altar at the moment <laughs> yes this is a beanie ba baby tag and my four-year-old son put it there because my magic needed a heart <laughs> so <laughs> I have kept it there for the time being because it's, it was really sweet and I was like, okay, <laughs> we'll just leave that. Um, let's see if I can move my chair back. Move chair. This is why we edit our videos, ladies and gentlemen. Um, number 12. If one of the YouTubers you watched was a genie and they could grant you three wishes within their power, what would it be and what wishes? Now, who would it be and what wish? wish oof. Dyslexia. <sighs> you guys are all awesome. Like, how do I pick one YouTuber? Um, you know what? I'm going to pick Lisa from Supporter of Tarot. And the three wishes are going to be, I'm going to come hang out with you in BC. Because it's a beautiful area and I've been there plenty of times. And we get to have coffee, talk tarot, go to witchy shops, we'll just, you know, make a day of it. That'll be my three wishes. <laughs> just make a day of it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I don't know. That was my thought. Hi, Lisa, you're awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. 13. If you could instantly become an expert in any part of your craft or spirituality, what would it be? Currently, right now, I would absolutely love to be insanely proficient at astral travel. It's something I've been working on. And one of my good friends, when discussing some of my experiences, said, like, wow, I think you kind of have a natural affinity to this. Which I was like, <laughs> I, I just, I couldn't believe her because I was trying to be modest for one and two. Um, you know, I'm sometimes my confidence is <laughs> still working on that but um you know I was like no no that's not true so it was, you know it's still like it was very sweet to hear it but it's something that I personally would love to get more proficient at because I think that it's going to become a big part of my pra practice as soon as I start to do it and I think it's going to be something that I'm going to be learning a lot about what I believe how I believe it and what I believe within myself so that is why I would love to be an expert. <laughs> I don't think I would. I, you're never an expert on anything, honestly. I don't think. There's always more to learn. But, um, you know, that's the best answer I can give to the question. When you die, what do you think will happen to your soul? <sighs> this is something I have been obviously really faced with over the last year. Um, and more, off, more so just in my life in general with kind of... Uh, coming to terms with some of the issue, things that I've had with communicating with the dead and mediumship things that I, that, the experiences with mediumship and trying to um, hone in on those abilities and trying to understand 
what happens to the soul when it leaves the body because now I have had several experiences in my life where I have watched the soul leave and you feel it you really do and it's something that once it happens once you experience it I think it marks you forever um I mean for me the first cases were animals but then I was with my mother at the time of her passing too so um and I, I distinctly remember when one of my cats passed, um, I had her in my arms and she looked right at my eyes and then just went and I could feel her soul leave. And it's hard because I have not completely ironed out what I think really is, but I wish that I do think that there are earthbound, earthbound spirits that are kind of chained to this world because they have not processed, um, and then thus you get hauntings. Or we get energetic imprints which create those um, residual hauntings, um, which I don't think are really caused by an entity per se, but a psychic imprint on the land or um, you know, a building or whatnot. So that's my explanation for ghosts. But for what I claim spirits, um, to me, ghosts not crossed over, spirits crossed over, over to where I still don't fully know, but I know it's somewhere. And um, I think that it's on a separate plane. I think that there is something called, there is a sense of collective consciousness. And I think that I do believe in reincarnation to a degree. I think that we do live different lives, but I also do think that we can um, kind of, because I think that, I think honestly that time doesn't exactly exist once you're dead. Um, once your soul leaves your body, time is irrelevant. And so for say, you can actually go back and um, experience different, the different lives that you have been a part of. Um, I believe that our souls have a certain imprint and so there are certain things that we're kind of meant to repeat as we go through the process. But um, yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that is and all that. But that's as far as I've gotten, at least with my own experiences and my own contemplations of it. But it's something I have been really diving deep into, especially given the experiences and kind of having this realization thrust upon me that I do communicate with spirits that have passed. So yeah, sometimes I maybe should have more conversations about with them about what this is. I don't know, but it's, it's more of a, like it's, I should make another video on, on that whole subject. But, um, question 15 is, um, where do you see yourself spiritually in the next five years? I don't know, but I hope it's somewhere great. <laughs> I hope it is with even more self-love, even more confidence, and a witch who knows what she's doing. Because, I mean, I'm not saying I don't, <laughs> but I, I want to have that. I want to get rid of that ever-looming presence of what if I'm what if I mess it up or I'm not going to, I, um, I'm not going to have the creative ability to create an amazing spell just from the top of my head. Um, that's something that I struggle with a lot and, or doubting my experiences. I'm so sick of doing it. I'm so sick of doing it. Um, so I just, I want to be done with it. I want to be done with that kind of thing. Um, and that's something I've also been working on is letting go of that doubt. And I did a whole video on it and I actually am, I'm going to say I'm quite proud of that video. I'm proud of the messages that I got across. I'm proud of the things that I said and I hope that it affected some of you guys because letting go of that doubt is so important and it will free you. And it's something that I am been trying to free myself of as well because I'm so sick of it. So I'm hoping that in five years I'm going to be one badass witch because that is what I want for myself. <laughs> with that being said that is the 15 questions and the other things that I wanted to quickly share 
this video is kind of long guys i'm sorry if you're still with me you are super awesome um thank you to all of my recent subs thank you guys for sticking with me for the downtime that i've had over the last few weeks i've been feeling a little uninspired so i really hope that i can make more videos and kind of come up with some fun topics for you guys like always if anyone has any suggestions i could use the inspiration especially right now so i would be very grateful if you guys make any comments about anything that you'd like to see from me let me know i don't when it comes to decks and stuff i don't generally do like full walkthroughs on my channel but i did post my deck collection as a live about a month ago if anyone sees anything in there that they would like to see a full walkthrough of i would love to do it upon request i can certainly do that um i just don't generally because I love that feeling of when you get a new tarot deck and you're like looking through and taking all the images in in person so I just I just didn't want to ruin that for, the, for anyone so if anyone actually does want to see something like that more than happy to do that if there's anything that you want me to discuss topic wise more than happy to do that I am currently going through some books that I'm reading and so hopefully I will start to get some book reviews out at the end of the month I will be posting this deck review and I'm going to be kind of extensive about that because I just kind of really want to get into this and like why I got it and that kind of stuff. And um, as I start to play around with these a little bit more, I think I'll probably reapproach that and tell you guys like what's been working and how I've been using them and stuff. Um, with that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you again, guys, and blessed be.